Welcome back. It's Jacqueline Clement here, and I'm going to talk to you guys today about the market update for November of 2021. Now, a bit of a different market than we did see in October, if you've been following. Um, just a recap, October basically had the biggest inventory shortage we have seen to date. Um, Shelburne here, we only saw three houses hit the market in October. So thankfully, it was a very different situation for November, although it still wasn't quite enough to keep the seller's market at bay. So let's take an in-depth look at Shelburne for November of 2021. Overall, of course, you all remember that we were all freaking out in October because we saw a huge shortage of inventory across the board. But Shelburne in particular took a huge hit with only three new listings hitting the market in October. So thankfully, we did see an increase in numbers, but still, guys, not enough. We only saw 22 new homes hit the market and 18 of those homes sold. So we still have a huge inventory shortage. Now, I want you to remember that in a regular, normal, stable market, the average time on market is three months, 90 days, which seems like a lifetime in the market we've seen over the last two years. But to only have a few homes left over is just not enough. And until we see more inventory, we're going to continue to see this market increase and buyer's fatigue increase. It's crazy. Knowing that the average days on market here in Shelburne were nine. Now, a bit of insight on that. Um, we did talk a little bit in October about offer presentations and how we were starting to sort of see those fizzle out, which was super exciting for a lot of buyers. It really helps to take back some of the stress and added pressure. However, I guess because of the inventory shortage, a lot of agents and sellers decided to bring back the offer presentation strategy. So in my opinion, I think that is why we saw even less days on market in November, which was nine compared to 15 days on market in October. Every single listing that came up had an offer presentation date. They were not accepting preemptive or early offers before that date. And they set the presentation date between seven and 10 days from the day it hits the market. So it makes sense that average days on market is now nine. But it, what does that mean? It just means you really have to be as a buyer on the ball. You and your agent have to make sure that you are being notified. So one of the crazy milestones that we hit in November is not the horrible news that we gave last month that, oh my goodness, we hit a record, we had no inventory on the market, and we only had three homes come up. This month, our record is that we outpriced attached housing in Orangeville. Yes, I said that correctly. Attached housing has now surpassed the price of attached housing in Orangeville. It's insane. So here's a little bit of my insight as to why that may have happened. 
And based on the particular properties that sold that we're using for this data, they were all in the brand new development here, um, Highland Village, which is a tribute community just on the west side of town, if you're not familiar. Um, there's a brand new subdivision that went in and it is really well laid out. The construction so far has been fantastic. No issues with the builders as far as we know. Um, and the designs and layouts of these properties is actually really smart. They're really quite spacious and bright. And the people who initially bought these as investment are now finally starting to catch on and we're seeing some turnover in that neighborhood. So the only townhome sales that we saw or semi-detached sales that we saw in November were in this neighborhood. Now, another thing that goes along with that, of course, we all know that there is added value to being a brand new home, but what comes along with a brand new home is the tarry on warranty. Everybody wants the peace of mind to know that their biggest investment is covered under a warranty. That is really, really invaluable. So overall, compared to Orangeville, we just saw a turnover of much, much newer housing, which has caused us to surge past the prices out in Orangeville. So with that said, let's get into the interesting part about what the heck do they actually sell for? Now, townhouses in Shelburne are now at an average sale price of $808,500. Insane, absolutely insane. So we are almost $20,000 over the average townhome price in Orangeville, which is pretty awesome. So anybody in Shelburne with a townhome, now might be the time for you to call up your realtor and ask for an updated CMA, uh, which is a competitive market analysis, which prices your home in this particular market. Overall, that was almost a 19% increase month over month from October. That is huge. We saw a similar increase in semi-detached housing. And I think for all of the same reasons, there were only a couple that ended up selling in Shelburne in November. And they, again, were all from that brand new development. So overall, an increase of 26.7% month over month from October for an average sale price of $830,250. Not bad at all. Really good news for sellers here in Shelburne for attached housing. And of course, story remains the same for detached housing. We did see an increase, although not as much. Um, an overall month over month increase of 7.7% making the average detached house 908,531. Still really, really good equity being built here. Really, really good returns on investment for anyone that has bought, you know, from a few months ago forward. We are still seeing equity being built. We are still seeing prices increase. So I still feel that real estate is a very, very safe investment and um, none of us are anticipating that to go away anytime soon. All right, so I already touched on Orangeville a little bit while I was discussing Shelburne, um, but now let's dive into what Orangeville itself actually looked like as far as sales in November of 2021. Overall, again, great news. We did see an increase in inventory, but again, it's still not enough. We went up 83%, which just goes to show you how little inventory we had in October. Um, but we increased 83% up to 44 active listings. So pretty good. But when you hear that we sold 51 homes in November, again, you start to understand where this seller's market is really stemming from we are selling them faster than we can list them. And I know the huge question to people in the area right now about why they don't list, is they're feeling uncomfortable about where they're gonna go. 
So we can talk a little bit about that afterwards, um, but still a driving force in causing these continued increases in prices and the continued seller's market frenzy. So 44 new listings, 51 of them sold in November alone. And again, we saw the return of offer presentations bringing our average days on market down to nine. So Shelburne and Orangeville were the same, both nine days on market, and both, I believe, are due to that return of offer presentation. Now, as I mentioned, compared to Shelburne, the attached housing numbers aren't quite as mind blowing <laughs> for Orangeville, but still saw a really, really strong month for sales of attached housing in Orangeville. Um, overall, a 4% increase on townhomes, which was a total sale price of $791,500. So just shy of $800,000. But honestly, even from the time that I did these statistics to now, which is halfway through December, that number is already increased again. So I can't wait to fill you in on what's gonna happen in the December market update. Make sure you stay tuned and subscribe for that information. Um, but 791,500 for townhomes across the board in Orangeville. Detached saw a small, sorry, semi-detached saw a small increase, 0.16%. Um, average sale price for a semi in Orangeville, 722,500. And again, if we go back to what we talked about regarding these numbers for Shelburne, the same falls true for Orangeville, but on the flip side, that a lot of the semi-detached in Orangeville, and as people get wind of these crazy high sale prices, we're seeing a lot of the older original semis that are 30 to 50 years old hit the market. So of course there's gotta be a balance. You can't sell an older semi that's 35 to 40 years old for the same price as you would one that's less than a year old. Um, so that's dragging down the average a little bit, but still overall a fantastic average price for a semi in Orangeville, if you're a seller, of course. Now detached. I might get some heat for this one, guys, because I'm going off the grid. As the statistics and the numbers came in for Orangeville, I they don't actually provide us with specific numbers for Shelburne. Um, there's a weird way they actually consider Orangeville Dufferin County as a whole. Long story short, that's just the way that the real estate boards are laid out. So I always have to do my own research to figure out the numbers for Shelburne, which is fine. But while doing so, I pull up the numbers for Orangeville and I actually found a significant discrepancy between what I found to be the average detached price versus what the real estate board was saying was the average detached price. So I ran the numbers a few times, I reset the filters and I ran them again. So I'm going with my number because theirs also just didn't make any sense to me. Um, I will tell you what the board said, that the average detached price in Orangeville was $967,700, which is a great number. However, I found it really, really hard to believe that we saw a decrease in value in detached homes month over month, October to November. So that's kind of what led me to rerun the numbers again and again, because I don't want to give you guys false information either way. I don't want to just take the board's word for it and I don't want to do my own numbers and then they'd be wrong. So here's both of them. It was 967.7 from the board. But when I ran the numbers, I got the average detached price of 1,010,569 which was an overall increase of 3.9% from October. So I'm not entirely sure what happened. I think there was one or two sales in there that somehow got missed. Um, but I definitely, from my own experiences, writing offers and listing homes, 
agree more with that there was an increase in price versus a decrease. So take all that with a grain of salt and do with it what you will. Um, those are the two numbers we're working with. And my own personal experiences lead me to believe, um, and of course I did my research myself, is that 1,010,569 seems a lot more on point with what things are actually selling for. So there you have it, a really interesting month in real estate um, across Dufferin County, Orangeville, Shelburne. And again, what we're really seeing come into play here is the age of homes. Um, of course, if you have an older home that you've completely renovated and it may as well be new, then those prices are going to be more reflective of a new build, but definitely something to keep in mind as you go all forward on your house hunt or start preparing your home for sale. You wanna make sure you have realistic expectations and understand why some homes are selling for this much and others this much. So there you have it. That is the market update for Dufferin County, mainly Shelburne and Orangeville for November of 2021. Um, but I did promise you that I was gonna talk a little bit about strategy as far as wanting to capitalize as a seller in this hot seller's market and having that fear of buying. Um, I think most of us, the experienced homeowner, maybe not if you're a first time buyer, but any experienced homeowner that has been through the process before is used to selling their home as being the most difficult part of the transaction. However, as you can see, that is the complete opposite in the market. And we have been in this for a long time now. So it's just all about adjusting your mindset and making sure you're working with a realtor that really this does show if they have your best interests in mind is buy first, get your home prepared, do all the decluttering, get the stagers in while you are already hunting and submitting offers for your new home. I personally wouldn't, I mean, it depends on your property and I don't wanna get sued here, but it's a pretty safe bet in this particular market to buy a property without a condition of selling your property and just give yourself the, the leeway of a slightly longer close. Because as you can see, it, the, the proof is in the pudding and the numbers that homes are selling and they're selling fast. So everything is selling right now. If you price appropriately and you get your home prepared properly for market and you have a good solid strategy with your agent, there is no reason you shouldn't be able to sell your home with more than enough equity and time to buy the new one. Go house hunting first, submit your offer, lock yourself in on a home that you like, hell, a home that you love, because the worst thing is capitalizing on all this great equity you've built in your home and then having to go buy something that you don't like, which has happened a lot. So there you have it. That's my market update for Dufferin County, November, 2021. And please make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, and of course, tune back in for our December update of 2021. It's bound to be a good one. Bye for now.